Hey guys, before we start this video, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone watching as we just hit 100,000 subscribers. So today I'll be giving away four $25 gift cards to Speedcube Shop, which is enough to get you at least a good magnetic cube like the YT MGC or Supernova Little Magic M. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is like this video and leave a comment. You don't have to subscribe, but if you like this video, then I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, huge thanks to Speedcube Shop for sponsoring this giveaway. My first Rubik's Cube was given to me by my parents on Christmas. I had gotten random gifts in the past as well, but I really liked playing with this. So could I solve it? Yes, of course, because it takes a special talent to be able to do it. Let me be clear, it is impossible to solve this thing on your own. Okay, that's not really true, but the only people who have figured out a Rubik's Cube all by themselves usually have prior experience with puzzles, or they have a very analytical mind and a lot of patience. I had none of those. In fact, I wasn't even trying to solve the cube. I didn't even mess it up. I would turn the cube three times and then try my best to solve that. When I succeeded, which I obviously did, I was happy about it. And then I would do four moves and bring it back. Yes, I had access to the internet and video games and friends, but for some reason I chose to do this instead. I'm not crazy. At some point I hit 10 moves, and the thing with 10 moves is you can't figure out what you did. You have to remember exactly what you did and try to undo it immediately afterwards. So anyway, that's the story of how I fully scrambled the cube for the first time. So for the next little while, every day I spent some time with my dad trying to make progress on the cube. We had a pretty easy time making one side, but doing any more than that was pretty much impossible. Like any beginner, I thought I had to make the second face after the first face, right? What else are you gonna do? But when I tried to make a second face, that's when I realized I had to move around pieces from the first side I made, otherwise I couldn't make the second face. So then just making one side wasn't really correct. It was at this point that I realized what I was up against, and I felt like it really wasn't something I would ever figure out. Turns out my mom knew how to make one layer, and did it for us. Thank you, mother. So fast forward many months, and I saw the cube sitting there, and decided, you know what? I'm going to try and solve it. Like, I'm really going to do it this time. Yep, I'm going to do it. Now, I didn't think I was going to learn how to solve it. I just thought I'd find a guide that told me what to do, and I'd just do what it said. Of course, I didn't realize how complex the Rubik's Cube really was, and applying a certain sequence of moves over and over was not going to solve it. I learned about move notation, solving the cross, and then each layer, and I wrote down all the steps for myself. After a couple of days, I memorized everything, and solving the cube only took me a few minutes. So once I had solved the cube, I didn't really feel like I had done anything extraordinary. I just kind of followed a guide and tried not to mess up. Of course, I knew it would be impressive to solve this thing in front of other people, but it wasn't impressive to me. It took 5 minutes, which a lot of people end up doing after a couple of days. To me, that took way too long, because I knew that if anyone just learned it themselves, they could do the same thing as me, and it wouldn't take very long. So if I wanted to feel good about showing this off, I had to get faster. That's why I wanted to be fast, so I could show other people and amaze them. I would say that's at least a little true in why we all started. Or maybe I'm just insecure. So I just practiced over and over until I could see things faster, think about the next step, turn faster, and just find any little shortcuts I could take. The first time I felt fast was when I had done it in just over a minute, but I wanted to keep pushing forward, and eventually my average was around 45 seconds, and my best solve time was 30 seconds, but of course there was some luck involved. I brought my cube to school one day and showed the teacher as well as some of my friends. They were really impressed by it, and after a few days, we had multiple people bringing their own cubes to class, already knowing how to solve it. It was amazing. We all hung out at school and heard from online that you can make your cube turn faster by putting in Vaseline, which also dissolves the plastic in the cube. That was actually pretty good, considering how hard it was to turn the original Rubik's brand cubes, so we wanted the plastic to get dissolved because it was so hard to turn with all that friction. During recess and lunch, a lot of us would solve some cubes and help each other get better, since everyone was new to it. I remember going to my friend's house and teaching him some tricks to make him faster, and then the next day, he brought a jar of Vaseline to school, and since I was the expert on taking apart and lubing cubes, uh, he wanted me to help him make his cube better. Eventually, we would all regularly bring our cubes to school, and by we, I mean more than 10 people in our class. So, you would like to solve a Rubik's Cube, I see. Yes, yes, join the dark side.
Solving a Rubik's Cube was pretty cool at first, especially when you're that young, but we were only a few recruitments away from holding a majority party in our class. Our teacher, who was initially supportive of this, now just kind of thought it was a noisy toy that makes kids competitive with each other. Not a great thing during class. My 7th grade teacher was really chill, and we all really liked him, but one day he got really angry with us and banned Rubik's Cubes from the classroom. I was pretty annoyed, of course, but looking back, it did make sense. We were really being a nuisance and it had to stop. It was really fun while it lasted though. I thought I was really fast. I was so well acquainted with the method that I could do it in my sleep. I knew there must have been world records, but I didn't really know much about it. So the internet was there, but didn't dominate our lives to the extent it does today. So if there was information out there to be known about, my first thought was not to Google it, or find a YouTube video. I mean, if this happened today, I wouldn't even have to search. As soon as I watch a Rubik's Cube tutorial, YouTube will just show me the world record in my recommended. The whole idea of finding similar people from all the way across the world was not really something I ever thought about. So I just kind of stayed in my own bubble for a while. I didn't think there was much more to learn, or that there were a lot of people who had the same hobby as me. But I was wrong. 